Thank you so much for coming. And first of all, more than anything, we'd like to thank Full Frame. It's been a true honor to have our world premiere hosted here in Durham, North Carolina. We've been having a fantastic time. And the audiences here are great for making us feel really welcome. So thank you to you all. Actually, April 17th, which is a few days from now, Tuesday, is the 40th anniversary of the day that Herman was put in solitary, which was when the guard was killed. So there's actually an Amnesty International petition that's going around. You can find it on our website at hermanshousefilm.com or Facebook. Facebook slash Herman's House the Film, and, and you know, definitely sign that, but yeah, any questions, comments? So the question was, uh, how did I meet the artist, and how did this film come about? Um, I had actually known Jackie, um, the artist, well before I started the film. We were in college together, um, well, she was in grad school when I was in college, but we, we were there at the same time, and we were friends, and um, you know, the film came about... Because basically, you know, you're always looking for things that might be interesting to make films about as a filmmaker. And I knew that because I was already friends with Jackie, I might, I'd have access. Um, because she, she trusted me um, because we were already friends and opened up her life. And so, you know, it's just one of those things where we started uh, filming and, and then, you know, one thing led to another. I also knew that with that, we weren't going to get access to Herman at all. I knew that the prison was that just wasn't going to happen. So after speaking to him for the first time on the phone, which was now almost five years ago, I realized, oh, his, his voice is very, you know, it has a lot of weight and it carries a lot of emotion. And I think this could work. We could make a film without showing our main character. And that might be okay. We'll see what, what other people think. But that, that was my idea at the time. Uh, I started, it was, it was the summer of 2007 when I started, kind of, when I first started talking to Herman on the phone, and that was, that was really where it started, because I knew Jackie, so I knew I could talk to her, kind of, whenever, and I knew that I was able to, you know, time shoots based on when the exhibit was going up, and, you know, I could do that kind of stuff, but it was really getting, you know, talking to Herman on the phone, getting these phone calls from prison, which are like unscheduled, 15 minutes, limited to 15 minutes, and, you know, whenever he can call. So sometimes it's once a week, sometimes, you know, he couldn't call for nine months. So it was just a process of, you know, talking to him and getting, getting his side. Yep. Do you know why he was put back in, in solitary? No, that's, that's a good question. The question is why he was put back in the solitary, and it's, it's like something we've struggled with as filmmakers, because on the one hand, it's obviously a question everyone's asking, but the question also like assumes a logic to the system. It assumes that the system has some, you know, which makes, which we would assume, you know, I want to know too. I, would, I mean, it's a great question. I mean, literally we put down what we put down, which is that, they said you violated some obscure rule because that's what they said, and now he's been in solitary. But it's kind of you know this Kafkaesque kind of system of justice in there. Like I don't, I don't really know, and I don't think anyone does. But I guess the fact that they could keep him in there for 36 years or 37 years up to that point, I don't think you know it was hard for them to come up with a reason to put him back. Yeah. Um, so the question is, what was the team when we were actually filming Jackie and doing the work of, you know, going to the different locations and stuff? Um, well, it actually changed quite a bit when, when there was not very much money in the film. Then it was basically me and a camera and, uh, you know, putting a mic on her. And as slowly, you know, the funding started coming in, you know, then I was able to hire people to shoot and things. You know, and and hire sound equipment persons, but at most it was at most it was never more than you know myself, a sound person, and, and a camera person. But it, I mean, interestingly, some of the most intimate, like the best kind of moments where she opened up, were those moments when there was nobody else but just the two of us. So if I was a better camera person, I would have just 
stuck with that the whole way, but that's not the case. Uh, the ask was the, was the wife of the um, killed, murdered security guard aware of how what kind of person Herman was and and the art project? Um, I think that the, at least the, on the the she was definitely aware of the project, the art project. Um, interestingly, she actually and I mean you kind of see it in that news clip that we used had been at some point convinced that these guys were innocent. And, and alludes to that. But then, you know, the politics in Louisiana are very, you know, complicated along racial lines. And, and she actually, at one point, was going around publicly, kind of, almost with the team that's trying to support Herman, and she basically flipped sides. <laughs> so, which is why, you know, she wasn't, she wasn't willing to talk to us in our film. But she, she now kind of is more with the prosecution and, and thinking, but I, I, it's hard to say what her actual personal feelings are. Like I don't know, but you know, she she's definitely been public at points questioning this whole thing because you know, and she said it at one point too that she's as much you know kind of a victim of this injustice because the the real person who killed her husband is out. That being said, I don't know if she still feels that now. Yes. Hey. Thank you so much. So the question was uh, how Jackie has been holding up and just emotionally with all the setbacks that have kind of she's faced. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, we, we, you know, it's 2012 when we started filming or shooting and stuff five years ago. So she's definitely gone through her ups and downs like lots of people. And I think right now she's actually in a pretty good place. Um, but there were some very difficult periods, some of them on camera, some of them not, where, um, you know, just the pressure of trying to get this project off the ground, I think she feels a lot of responsibility to her, towards Herman, but also just surviving as an artist is very difficult, as all the filmmakers who are here will know. So, you know, she's also always facing that pressure, and like everyone else who kind of got hit by this horrible economy the last few years, Things definitely changed for her, uh, financially, dramatically, around that time. And that was hard. You know, a lot of the funding that she had kind of dried up and disappeared. Yes, um, so the question is, to what degree did this kind of consume her, um, just doing this kind of prison work and this art project? And I think too, I mean, I tried to portray it accurately on camera, I mean, I think it consumed her quite a bit. I mean, I think it kind of overtook her life, and she actually moved to Louisiana, which I was like, why, you know, didn't make sense to me at all at the time, but, you know, that, that was her decision. So for a while, she, this was all she was working on. Um, in the last year or two, and I think this has been part of her, you know, emotional kind of growth and development and getting over some of um, what's been happening, she started doing other work, and I think she's in a much better place now that... So she has another show um, coming up on a totally unrelated, you know, subject, and she's been starting to go beyond that, and I think that gives her some balance. What's the unrelated um, subject? She did a series... She was at a residency in Poland where she did a series of paper cuts of... I don't... I, don't, I can't describe them because I haven't seen them, but... Um, Basically, you know, basically traditional paper cuts of, of, of scenes, I would guess. But, you know, very, very varying art projects. She's actually doing a project about her younger brother that's going to open in a gallery in New Orleans in a couple weeks, that, um, which she's busy working on now. And I don't know what that will be like either until I see it. But, yeah, it's just focused on her relationship with her younger brother and her younger brother's life and 